Father, we're here for you tonight. Lord, as we've all come and set aside time, God, I pray that you would just meet us where we're at as we respond to your goodness and your faithfulness, God, as, as we sing your praises. God, we just want to come and say thank you. In Thanksgiving season, Lord, we want to say thank you to you, giver of life, giver of every blessing. And we even want to say thank you, Lord, for the trials and the growth that comes through them, Jesus. So, Lord, as we sing these songs to you, I pray that you would be glorified, you would be honored. Lord, this is all for you. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. 
worship you, to sing songs of praise and adoration, lifting up our King. God, this is all for you. Lord, we pray that you would bless this night. We pray that you would be honored as we lift up songs and prayers as incense, Lord. God, we pray that it would smell sweet. Lord, we thank you for this space. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome, everybody. We're um, glad to worship with you all. And um, just tonight, we're going to have a night of prayer and praise and thanksgiving. And later on tonight, we're going to open up the mic for testimonies. And so... I just really encourage you guys, um, draw near to me and, and I will draw near to you. Kind of one of those moments where we just want to set some time out of our busy lives, out of a busy, very interesting year, just to reflect and say, Lord, thank you. And so just as we're singing these songs, um, I just encourage you guys to go deep. Just ask the Lord, what do you want? for me tonight? What do you want me to, to let go of? Lord, maybe you're here and, and you're just saying, Lord, I just need to know that you're, you're with me. Um, maybe, maybe you need prayer. There would be a moment for that as well. And so um, just with that, let's give our, our all as we lift up songs to our King and remember what he's done. Amen. So let's Let's continue worshiping Jesus.
shall have everlasting life. His love is great. It's mighty. It's all for you. Sing it. I'm Thanksgiving Eve to you. Grab your seats. We're going to get back to worshiping in a couple of minutes, but for the next couple of minutes, we're going to talk about a few things. 
Um, I have a couple of quick announcements that I need to make. And then I'm going to share a few things. I want to ask everybody to keep a couple of things in prayer. One is that tomorrow we're having our police department outreach every year at Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter and other times uh, we put together full meals for the police and for the different law enforcement staff and we deliver it up there and it's uh, a great opportunity just to serve the men and women in law enforcement. Uh, keep that in prayer tomorrow. And then for those of you who signed up, our Thanksgiving dinner is here tomorrow from 1 to 4. The office is going to be closed Thursday and Friday and there's no youth group on Friday night. And our next major event as a church is our old-fashioned Christmas party. And that's going to be on December 6th. That will be a week from this Sunday. A couple of things is that the event has filled up very quickly. Uh, thank you guys for signing up and not waiting till the last minute. Uh, we are pretty full. And so if you wanted to come and you haven't signed up, we want to ask you to please sign up tonight. Sunday at the end of church, the sign-ups will be closed, and that gives us, you know, the rest of the week to prepare and make sure that we have enough of everything, including seating. And then speaking of seating, um, we are still trying to be good citizens. Our governor has asked us to continue to be good citizens in the face of coronavirus, and so we've planned our seating in such a way that is accordingly a couple of things to think about is uh, if you signed up for just a couple of you or maybe a family of four and you didn't sign up with another family, what we've done is we've arranged seating. And so if you desire to sit alone, in other words, you want a private table, uh, we need to know that and we will accommodate you. That's no problem at all. We just need to know that as we're setting up. So if you signed up and you didn't somehow indicate that you didn't want to sit with somebody else just call the church office or stop at the Connection Center, let us know. If you've signed up and you're not going to make it, please let us know that because that opens up space. And then the next and last thing is that we're not going to be taking any payments at the event. So if you've signed up and you've not yet paid, please stop at the Connection Center, get that taken care of beforehand. It's just going to be such a busy event, we're not going to have anybody manning a, a payment device or anything like that. So, And then one last thing I want to say is... Um, you know, there's a lot of different responses to what's going on with coronavirus and stuff, and the responses are vast and various, but I do want to ask all of you to be mindful and to be careful. Just this past week, um, we've received a number of communications from people within the body letting us know that, hey, keep us in prayer, our family's down with coronavirus, we've tested positive, and, you know... Some people, it's like, hey, barely any symptoms. We've had others that are saying, we are just so sick. Please pray for us. So I'm just asking, we gather. We don't want to stop gathering. We're a church. What do churches do? We gather, right? And so I just want to encourage everybody, when, when you're not at church, try to be super careful because we don't want to bring, we want to spread love. We want to spread the word. We don't want to spread coronavirus. So let's just do your best. Be careful. If you happen to be feeling rough and it's a church service, I encourage you, watch online. Um, just want to be careful to not spread. Uh, sometimes carriers don't get it and they spread to somebody who gets really sick. So I'm just giving a pastoral, I'm a shepherd. You know, there's a lot of pastors out there and I think if you asked them, what's your gifting? They'd say, I'm a CEO, man. I could run a major corporation. I'm a shepherd. And that's my gifting. That's how God has built me. And when I look out and I see you guys, I look and I see people who I love and I care for. And so I just want to ask you guys, please be careful. Care for your uh, fellow sheep. So I just want to share with you a couple of things. Um, if you want to grab your Bible, make your way to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It'll take me a few minutes to get there. So just swipe to 1 Thessalonians. Thessalonians 5, or turn in your Bible, but let me just pray real quick, and, and we'll get to the Scriptures in a few minutes. Father, thanks for this Thanksgiving holiday. 
And Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. As Brian and the worship team were leading us in worship a few minutes ago, Lord, I was just dealing with my own heart, and I was laying before you my cares and my concerns, and I was just giving you thanks, Lord, for all of the countless blessings. Lord, once I start counting my blessings, I feel like I could just go on forever. And I want to pray tonight, Lord, that no matter where we are in here tonight, that our hearts would shift and we would just completely be consumed with thanksgiving tonight, Lord, the giving of thanks to the God of the universe. And we pray tonight, Lord, if we're looking at our circumstances and saying this is kind of a rough season, then I pray we would give thanks more than we ever have, knowing, Lord, that whatever you've allowed into our lives right now, you have a purpose for it. And so we praise you and we thank you, Lord. We're just so grateful to be here tonight, and our hearts are open to you, Lord. So speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So here at Calvary Chapel, you know, I think we get to know our Bibles pretty well. We're always in the Word, and we know that as you study the Old Testament, the feasts of Israel were later called the feasts of the Lord. And um, as you get into the New Testament, you find that as the gospel went out into the Gentile world, that Gentiles were not commanded to follow all of the feasts of Israel. And what we find is that as the gospel went forth into various cultures, different traditions began to develop and we know that in our country, Thanksgiving Day is not a biblical holiday. You can't say, hey, flip to, you know, this portion of the New Testament and we'll talk about where Thanksgiving came from. And in fact, it's, it's an American holiday. And if your American family is anything like my American family, over the years we have developed a number of traditions. How many of you have family traditions, something you do at Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, stuff like that? And it's just... For us, we've developed traditions of how we celebrate Jesus in the various seasons, uh, the various holidays that come along. And as we've studied over the years, traditions can be dangerous, but traditions can also be a big blessing, especially if the traditions that we observe during different holidays draw attention to the finished work of Jesus and draw attention to the Lord's provision, uh, then those traditions can be good and oftentimes are good. Thanksgiving Day, as you and I know it, was birthed when an 18th century congressman named Elias Boudinot introduced a resolution urging the President of the United States to recommend to the American people a day of public prayer and thanksgiving. In fact, if you go back and, and you do some research, um, I found that what we do on Thanksgiving, which is gorge ourselves with lots of food, that wasn't the original intention. The original intention was a day of fasting and prayer and, you know, really seeking the Lord. There's nothing wrong with eating on Thanksgiving, but it's, you know, it was supposed to be a day of public prayer and thanksgiving. All, although there was much opposition to it, and as you study history, you find that when, when this uh, resolution was introduced, there was a lot of opposition. But on October 3rd, 1789, President George Washington made the following proclamation, and it's kind of long, and I'm going to read it in five or six sections and comment on it. So this is what George Washington said. He said, whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor, and whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint commitment requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayers to be observed by acknowledging the grateful hearts, the many signal, which means outstanding, favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity, an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign 
Thursday, the 26th of November, next, to be devoted by the people of these United States to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be. Now, we'll stop there for a minute. President Washington set aside November 26th of 1789 as the first Thanksgiving holiday, and since then we've modified that to be the last Thursday in November, and so the date changes, but it's always the last Thursday in November. And each year at this time, we set aside a day for the people of this nation to offer thanksgiving to what George Washington called the great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, and that will be. And we know him as the Lord God Almighty. It's funny, as Christians, we don't know whether to say Father, Son, or Holy Spirit, right? But it's the Lord God Almighty, his Son, Jesus Christ, his Holy Spirit. And then President Washington acknowledged that our Heavenly Father isn't just the American's God. He acknowledged that He's the God of all nations and that all should seek to obey His will. President Washington urged Americans to have grateful hearts as they remember God's outstanding favor. President Washington urged Americans to thank God for the form of government that we enjoy, a government that was originally formed to provide safety and to allow people to pursue happiness and religious liberty. And so let's keep reading here. He goes on and he says, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation for the signal or outstanding and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence, which we experienced in the course and conclusion of the late war for the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty which we have since enjoyed, for the peaceable and and rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and particularly the national one now lately instituted for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed. Now, he goes on and and he says, if you just keep looking at this paragraph that's up on the, the screen, picture President Washington. And he's saying, God, he's addressing the God of the universe. He says, God, we see your hand in the establishing of this nation. He says, we acknowledge that your hand gave us victory as we fought for our independence. And now we've obtained the liberty to worship you according to your word, rather than according to the rules of the state church. And he goes on and he thanks God for these things. Keep reading. He says, and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge and in general for all the great and various favors which he hath been pleased to confer upon us. And also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions. This is really important. President Washington, in this address, he implored Americans to thank God for the knowledge that they were given in in various realms. And then he asks us to be faithful to use that knowledge to honor God. He says it's the God of the universe that's given us various knowledge and abilities, and he says we should use all of that to to honor God. And then President Washington thanked God for the various favors that are bestowed upon us. He urged Americans to unite in confessing and seeking forgiveness for our personal and national transgressions, what the Bible would call willful sins. He, He says that on Thanksgiving Day, we should take time to confess our sin. 
We should take time to come before the Lord and to say, God, you've given us so many blessings, and at times we take that for granted, and, and we need to repent of that heart attitude that leads us to this place. Two more things that he says. He, he says, to enable us all, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually to render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as have shown kindness unto us, and to bless them with good government, peace, and what did he say? Concord. Interesting here. This is, this is where I think you and I are struggling and where our nation is at right now because President Washington urged Americans to pray and ask God to help them be good citizens. He, he comes right out and he says, you know, pray, ask God to help you be a good citizen. He says, uh, he, he urged then that our government and the men who held government positions would seek God, and they would seek God for the ability to be able to govern wisely, for the ability to uphold the national constitution that had been put in place, and that they could be an example and provide help to other nations, even if those nations didn't deserve the help, but especially to the ones that did. And again, I think this is where you and I are really struggling. We're looking at the government of the United States of America right now, and we're saying <laughs> it has really fallen far from this, how much we need to pray. And the last thing he said, these are his closing remarks. He says here, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue and the increase of science among them and us, and generally to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best. And then he closes by saying, given under my hand at the city of New York the third day of October in the year of our Lord, 1789. Now, pay attention to this. President Washington urged Americans to seek God and to thank God for the ability to practice what we would call biblical Christianity. That's what he meant when he said true religion. Biblical Christianity and all of its inherent virtues. And again, you and I look and we say how far our nation has fallen from that. And then he also did something very interesting. He urged Americans to use science and other means to bring about national prosperity. He, he said, you know, it's good to pray. It's good to seek the Lord. But he says, God has given you wisdom and knowledge. He says, use that. Use the sciences. Use the understanding that God has given us of how this world works and, and our understanding of business and other things so that the United States of America can be a prosperous place for people to live. And remember, all of this was brought about at the birth of the holiday that you and I call Thanksgiving. Now, this morning I woke up and I, I was praying about my day and praying about what I was going to talk about tonight in a few minutes before we get back to worship. And I went through and I read this a couple of times. I started thinking through where we are as a nation. I started thinking about the things that George Washington said and I started comparing it to where we are as a nation right now, especially after this last election. And I cannot help but see so many areas where we as a nation, as individuals, as a people have just strayed so far from the things that, that President Washington envisioned for our great country, a country where, where God and His Word and the worship of God was supposed to be the center of what we do. It was supposed to be how our government was built. And so as I started thinking about this, then of course I started thinking about, you know, this last year, 2020. Been kind of a hard year, right? Kind of an interesting year. 
nine months now we've been dealing with COVID-19 and the, the peripheral effects that it's had on our nation. The election has just been anything but, you know, filled with integrity and uprightness. I think the rest of the world is looking at the United States and, and this last election and probably just laughing at us, especially when we claim to be a Christian nation. And so the, the election has brought trouble. It's brought more division than probably anything this last year. And some people are kind of just unaffected by all of this stuff. And then other people, they're totally distraught. You know, they're, when it comes to COVID and the election and all these other things, they're, they're just an emotional mess. And I just said, Lord, if you would just give me one scripture for tonight, just something that I can share with the church and anybody watching online that would give us direction as we prepare for our Thanksgiving celebrations tomorrow. And um, the Lord really spoke to me from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. So go ahead and turn there. I hope you already did because I want to get back to worshiping so we can have some time for testimonies. But I want you to listen to what Paul says. Chapter 5, verse 18 of 1 Thessalonians, he says this. He says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Lord, what's your will when it comes to how I respond to coronavirus? Lord, what's your will when it comes to this election? Lord, what's your will? And, and, and we throw out a thousand different things, and the Lord says, let's just... Let's throttle it back a little bit. Let's just, let's boil it down to the bare minimum, the absolute bare minimum. The Lord says this, in everything, I want you to notice he doesn't say for everything. How many of you have ever smashed your thumb and just praise you, Jesus, that I get to go to the emergency room, you know? Anybody ever done that? You know, you come out in the morning and your car has been vandalized. Praise you, Jesus, for my car being vandalized, you know? If so, you need help. <laughs> we praise Jesus in everything, not for everything. You know, if the doctor comes in and he says, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's a terminal diagnosis, you know, very few people are like, yes! You know, I know we want to see Jesus, but, you know, there, there's some other things to think through. But listen, this is what Paul said. He says, I'm not telling you to give thanks for everything. I am telling you to give thanks in everything. And if you study this word and you really dig into the Greek word en, it's E-N, Paul is saying this to us. He says, in the midst of everything, regardless of whether we like it or not, choose to give thanks instead of complaining. Choose to give thanks instead of grumbling. Choose to give thanks instead of focusing on everything that's wrong. It's where we choose joy. We choose thanksgiving. In fact, Let's go a little bit deeper. Go back to verse 16. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Paul says this. He says, rejoice always. And so what he's saying is make a conscious choice for joy. Choose joy over sorrow regardless, okay? And then he says, pray without ceasing. And I sure hope this is a word for somebody. I know there's, there's two personality types when we talk about extremes when it comes to certain things. One person gets stressed out and they immediately just got a vent. Hey, man, you know what just happened? Blah. Right? You, you have those friends that vent on you. And afterwards, you're just like, ooh. You know, but, but here's the thing. The other personality type keeps everything inside until they blow up. But I think what Paul would say to us is it's better just to immediately go to prayer. You don't have to call somebody and tell them. And you don't have to just pack it down. Immediately begin communing with God about the things that concern you because it's so much more fruitful than those negative conversations. You know what just happened again? And your friends are like, I don't want to answer when you call anymore because you just always call and vent on me. And, you know, it was cool the first couple of times, but I can't carry your loads anymore. But Jesus can. Call him. He always picks up. He never hits the little, you know, ignore button. Paul says, rejoice always continually stay connected with God through prayer about these things that concern you. And then he says, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So 2020, ladies and gentlemen, I know it's been a hard year, and I'm going to share with you my personal opinion. This is not a, a prophecy of doom and gloom, but 
I think that things are going to get harder before they get easier. And I think that right now God is doing a work of purging in His church. God is doing a work of, of just really squeezing so that we can see what's inside and we can be transformed. But He's using these things to build the character of His people. And so we need to make a choice this Thanksgiving season and maybe from this point forward that we're going to choose to rejoice always. We are going to choose to pray without ceasing. We are going to choose to give Him thanks in the midst of everything for this is His will for us in Christ Jesus. If we had to stand up and say, okay, everything that George Washington has, we're throwing it all out the window because it, it's just not working anymore. Well, then we go back to the fact that we trust in the living God we go back to the choice for joy, the choice for prayer, and the choice that in everything we are going to give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us. So, tomorrow when you gather around your turkey, or whatever it is you're eating, how about we all take a little bit of time to thank God, to praise God, even to confess sin, and just to ask God to cleanse and to purify, and then we spend the entire day just thanking Him and rejoicing for all of the goodness and the provision that He's given us. Yeah, it has been a hard year, but uh, is there anybody in the room that can stand up and say, God was not faithful to me thus far? None of us. And He will always be faithful. Always, always, always. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of minutes and we're just going to continue worshiping. And then... I'm going to come back up and I'm going to open up the mic for anybody that wants to come up and share a testimony about God's goodness or a prayer request and we will join together and pray. Uh, praise report, whatever it is. But that's the agenda for the rest of the evening. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for the vision that President George Washington laid out for this nation. And we want to pray we could get back to fulfilling that vision where we are a people who keep you at the forefront and the center of how our nation is run. And we thank you for our constitution. And we pray right now, Lord, especially in the midst of what's going on in our nation, that the men and women in the government who have taken an oath and a vow to do their job according to that constitution would get back to doing that or be held accountable and Lord, maybe even replaced because they're not upholding the vow that they made. Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And Father, we don't believe that the Constitution is a, any kind of a savior, but it is the document that this nation was founded on and that the government is required to follow. And we want to pray, Lord, that even in the midst of what's going on with our current election, and as we move forward into January, a new year, we pray, Lord, that the United States of America would be a place where the name of Jesus is held high, where his word is honored, and that we would be a people that give thanks. And Lord, the results of this previous election, we ask for your will to be done. We, we don't presume to understand the way you work in, in world affairs. But we pray for your will. And we do pray, Father, that what you want to happen would be done. And Lord, that the whole world would be able to look on and see what you have done, Father. We pray over tomorrow, Lord, a day that we call Thanksgiving Day. And I pray that our hearts and lives would just be overflowing with thanks and praise for the God of the universe who loves us so much that he gave his son Jesus to die for us. How could we ever pay you back, Lord? By offering our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable, which is our spiritual act of worship, Lord. Receive our worship this evening, Father, in Jesus' name.
I worship His holy name. I sing like never before. Oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawn. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be seen when the evening comes. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Oh, you're rich in love, and you smoke you
no place that your love can't reach us. Thank you, Lord, that your love is always reaching out to us in the good and the bad seasons of our life. We love you so much, Lord. Hey, saints, I just want to read to you from 107 
uh, 1 and 2 in Psalms, Psalms 107, 1 and 2. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And then you would say, for his mercy endures forever, right? It's one of those psalms of response. So let's try it again. Oh, give thanks for the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. His mercy does endure forever. And then the psalmist comes along and he says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. How many of you have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy through the blood of Jesus? And so we're supposed to say so. We're, we're supposed to share that with each other. So I just want to open up the mic, um, give opportunity for anybody to come up and just to share something awesome that the Lord is doing, or maybe a concern on your heart that we can all join you in prayer. Just really anything to edify and build up the church. And a little bit of instruction, there's a black piece of tape and a really sensitive mic. So you can stand right here, you don't have to get up. And this way we're kind of a little bit safe, so for anybody who's concerned. So come on up, Manla. We're just going to spend a few minutes edifying each other by giving the Lord praise and sharing what God's doing in our lives. Well, the Lord prompted me tonight, so even though I don't like this, but I, the song that Mary, um, Mary Kay sang in the first set of songs about God changing lives just really um, spoke to me for two reasons. First of all, about 45 years ago, he injected himself into my life, and I have never regretted it, never doubted it. And though I haven't obviously been perfect, I've tried to follow him the best I could, and so thankful for this church and the growth that I have personally had here. And though I've been in some churches that I've appreciated greatly and were special. I can say from the bottom of my heart, it's nothing like this church has been for me. But my primary reason to come up tonight was because of a member of our, our family whom we have been praying for for a special and particular reason. And there may be some out here who have actually joined in prayer with us for this one. And God is working and changing there. Amen. And though it just kind of came out of the blue uh, as far as what's going on, I I'm so grateful that God hears our prayers. And this is a praying church. And for our um, prayer team that meets on Tuesday, we do feel like a team. And it has grown, and it's very encouraging. And again, I encourage if you have the free time to come it's a special group it really is and we become really close friends and the prayer together is very sweet thank you hey menla before you go mm -hmm. yeah praise god we don't have to mention who this is but let's just all join in prayer real quick because menla just mentioned that they've been praying for a family member they're seeing god work um the enemy would love to come and put a stop to that. So let's let's just pray that God would continue that. Father, we want to thank you for Menla. And Lord, what a blessing she and Dennis are to this church. Lord, what a blessing it's been just to know them and to meet members of their family. And Father, for this family member that has been and is being prayed for, and now, Lord, the fruit of those prayers are coming in the form of positive answers. And, and Lord, I got to hear this story in its fullness a little bit earlier. And Lord, we're just rejoicing because this is a big thing. Lord, this is a very big thing. This is the, the, tr the changing and the transforming of a human heart through prayer and through love and through good examples. So Lord, we, we pray that the prayers would not stop, they would increase. But we also pray, Lord, that you would put a hedge of protection around this person and draw their heart so close to you, Lord, that this would be a life-transforming season in this person's life. And we thank you, Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks thank for sharing. Yes, yeah, thank thanks for sharing. Teresa is going to come up and encourage us with something that the Lord is doing. Okay, I also.
also too didn't expect to come up and speak tonight, but I felt like the Lord called me. Um, I wanted to tell you what God has been doing and showing me for the last eight months um, since COVID hit. Uh, some of you may have heard of an organization called Love Life. It is based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. God has called over 300 churches in the last three years. There are 65,000 men and women who are involved in the program. These are men and women who take and go out to the clinics or unfortunately God's precious gift that he gives us the blessings to have children are unfortunately sometimes taken. So Love Life gets out and prays and walks in front of the clinics. And I experienced this weekend, I am a mentor. I have been with Ebony for eight months now. And I went to Charlotte to have her do her speech. And God has just shown me how awesome he is in the eight months that I have been Ebony's mentor. When COVID hit, I had a friend call and say, I would like you to be a mentor. Uh, and she explained to me about Love Life. And I'm like, wow, I've never heard of this organization. And it was great. And I said, okay, I'll try. And I was nervous. I've never mentored anybody. And I'm like, what do I need to do? And she said, share the love of Christ with her, to love her. She has another daughter. And she said, and to have a shower for her. And my first words were, gosh, how can I have a shower when it's COVID? I can't. There's nothing I can do. And I, you couldn't group, you couldn't meet. And God, in his awesome way, he provided for Ebony. We were able to drive to Charlotte. And at the Life Mentor office, we were able to give her a small shower with five of us. And God had provided everything that Ebony needed, from a crib to a car seat to a pack and plate to clothes for a year, diapers and bottles. This is a wonderful organization. We have reached out in Raleigh also, and we just they just now started in New York. And when I was there this weekend, God said to me that the only way that we can get this going here in South Carolina is to start telling people about it. So I wanted you to know that if anyone feels called or led to be a mentor, uh, you can go to Love Life's website. Um, there is training. There is uh, special things that you have to do. We do have online Zoom meetings to be a mentor. So if you feel that the Lord's calling you or maybe you even want to go to a prayer walk when they do have it, uh, I encourage you to do it. Uh, being a part of Ebony's life in, in Zeta um, is a blessing. Um, they're like a, fa a family to me and I will always have a relationship and uh, I feel that these women uh, normally make the decisions they do based on because they don't have anyone to love them they don't have anyone to share the love of Christ and the good news on how that baby is a gift and that if they just trust in the Lord he will provide for them but unless we share the love of Christ and love on these women who are scared, uh, we, we, we just have to. So I just wanted to let you know that it's been very moving and God has uh, just shown me so much more in life and it's really just blessed me. Thank you for sharing that. That's a blessing. Yeah. Anybody else? Travis. I uh, wasn't sure what God had here. I, a few minutes ago, when PR got up, 
I was opening the scripture because God just, I just really felt God impressing me to, to say something. And I opened it to Thessalonians chapter 5 <laughs> before PR got up here. My wife says, well, How'd you know? I, said, I didn't know. Uh, yesterday, when we were, or Monday, when we were at the shoebox uh, processing center, uh, a few years ago, one of the guys that went with us started writing short scriptures on the inside of these boxes where we pack the shoe boxes in there kind of as a as a encouragement to those who who might be opening the box to give these shoe boxes out and so i started doing that and the scripture that came to mind was first thessalonians 5 16 17 18 and 19. and so that's why i opened the scripture there tonight for some reason and i was looking as pr was going over the scriptures and I have a note here by verse 19, which we didn't cover, but verse 19 says at the end, of, obviously I'll go back up to verse 16 because it's a run on sentences. Paul usually does. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. But next to 19, I had uh, wrote in there Ephesians 4.25. And 4.25 says, Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need like Teresa's doing. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And what God's just laid on my heart is we have choices here. You know, it tells us clearly this is the will of God for us. This is how we do not quench the Spirit. But all of those things, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. Do not quench the spirit. Do not lie. Do not steal. Those are choices that we make. And I think all of us would agree we want to walk in the spirit. We want God's Holy Spirit to be upon us and work through us and touch others. But that only happens when we choose to do what God says. And so I just, let's just choose to do what God says. Amen. You dropped something. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good word. Encouraging. God's kind of given us a theme for the evening. We got a few minutes left. Anybody else want to share a testimony or come up and have us pray over something? Can I just share? Just real quick? Yes. Praise God. I just want to say thank you to God. And I just want to say thank you to this body who's been a family to me and to Phil. I mean, I was very dry for a very long time. I was very involved in church and then. Um, I didn't walk away from the Lord, but I just stopped serving Him. But I came here and I found a body that loved me just as I am and loved Phil just the way he is and were willing to work with us and to allow us to use the gifts that God has given us. And we are not always perfect. I don't know we sing well or play well or teach well, but that a body of Christ where we're allowed to use the gifts and to learn and mentor, be mentored. And I just want to be, say thank you to the body. Thank you to Jesus for bringing us here. And yeah. I love you all dearly. We think you guys are pretty great. Who else? Because I've got something on my heart. Anybody else? Ed, Ed's coming up. It's okay, you're next. Roman, come on up close so that we can make the most of our time. I have uh, been part of the prayer meetings here for some time now, and I have not been here for a couple weeks. I was traveling, and a number of different things that did not allow, and I have missed it immensely. Tonight, I came here to be part of that and I left my phone, and I couldn't do the Zoom. There was no one here. It was all being done remotely. So 
I just have to pray what has been on my heart. And it is just this. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for everything that we have, Father. You are truly amazing. Heavenly Father, my testimony is that I was a heathen. I was nothing before you. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks that you still chose me yes. as one of your children. Father, let all of us, especially myself, remember that we are not good and we should certainly not think we are good enough. Father, you deserve so much more from each and every one of us. Continue to work in our hearts, every one of us, Father. Father, we just give you thanks. I thank you as it's already been prayed, Father, or already mentioned. Father, I thank you for this body. I thank you for this church. I thank you for Pastor Randy for being the shepherd that he is. Father, we ask for your protection, your guidance, your love, and the mercy that we've already sang about tonight, Father. Father, I just, we just ask that you look over us, protect us, and guide us. We give you thanks for all the bounty we have, and that goes for everyone here. I know their heart says the same. Everything that we have is from you, Father. Yes. So we should be thankful in all. And we especially give you thanks to your Son, Jesus, our Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on up, Roman. Thank you, Ed. How's it going? <laughs> so, 2020, am I right? So, something that's been on my heart and that, you know, at the back of my mind at times, not gonna lie, um, is though we're going through these trials and tribulations, God is always there to help us. He says, call upon his name and he will, he will guide us, he will help us, he will help us with our burdens. And one thing that's, another thing that's just been playing at the back of my mind is no matter how hard things are, God has it in his hands. He's not gonna let us down. He's not gonna fail us. He'll always be there for us. Always gonna help us. He's got the whole world in his hands. <laughs> Thanks, Roman. Roman got baptized a couple of weeks ago. That was super exciting. I've got something on my heart and I'm really going out on a limb here. Um, and so I want to close with this and then we'll do our closing song. Unless there's someone who has a burning testimony, you were going to get up and you didn't. Go in once, go in twice. Okay. At the uh, Deep South Pastors and Leaders Conference this year, um, Pastor Sandy asked that Kelly would stand up and we prayed for her. And in that moment, I felt like God spoke to my heart and said that that was a turning point. And that was the first week of September. And so September, October, November, and the last three months, Kelly has been doing so well. And I want to thank you guys for your prayers. Um, the last week, there's been a little bit of a dip, but we, you know, we know what's going on with her. And so keep her in prayer this week. It has been a rough week for her and I'm, I'm praying that she bounces back again quickly but as I was driving into the parking lot here tonight the Lord put something on my heart and and I've been pondering it and praying about it and I'm gonna do it so I'm not allowed to uh, to say who because various people have contacted me this week saying hey PR pray for us you know we've got coronavirus and you know we know Tony still stuck in Ukraine and we've got another group of families within the church and I just haven't had their permission to say it so I'm not going to say their names but I'm going to go out on a limb tonight and I'm going to ask you guys to join me in prayer because I'm going to ask God to give them a quick 
healing and get them back to normal as quick as possible. And I don't normally do stuff like this unless the Lord is really prompting me and I'm really feeling prompted. So we're going to pray for all those no-name families and individuals who are sick with coronavirus and other things right now. Uh, flu's going around, lots of colds going around, and I've seen some stomach stuff going around. I'm just going out on a limb tonight. I feel a really strong prompting from the Lord. And so if you guys are at home and you're watching, lay hands on each other. And everybody else here, we're just going to agree in prayer with this closing prayer, and then we're going to have our closing song, and feel free to hang out uh, as long as you want fellowship tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, you know, Father, that there's been times in my life where you have spoken to me about specific things, specifically in the realm of healing. And I remember on a Sunday morning, Father, you prompted me to just forego the Bible study and to have a, a morning of, of testimonies and praying for one another. And it was that very morning, morning that you healed Tony of lupus. And, and Lord, that was a major turning point in his life. And I just remember waking up and you said, do this today. And I remember tonight driving into this parking lot and I, I just really believe you said, do this. So Lord, I'm going out on a limb, walking by faith, trusting that you have prompted this, that this is a work of your spirit the same way that you prompted Pastor Sandy to have everybody lay hands on Kelly back in September and we saw a turning point. And Lord, I'm praying for all of the sick at Calvary Chapel Greer and various families that people in this room are thinking of, that they're aware of, that have coronavirus and flus and bad colds. And Lord, I really believe that you're speaking about people who are struggling with depression and anxiety. And Lord, just altogether feeling spiritually and emotionally spent. Lord, I believe you're speaking right now and you're just saying that we need to cry out to you. Everybody needs to cry out to you for healing and to say to you tonight, Lord, we trust in you. We believe that you're doing a work and we want to pray, Lord, for these various individuals and families for all of these different ailments, both physical, emotional, and spiritual. And we pray, Father, for a, a healing, for a turnaround. And some of them, Lord, I believe it'll be instantaneous. And others, it'll be that tonight is the turning point. But I believe this with all of my heart, or I would not be praying this tonight, Lord. And I, I'm just asking that now, Lord, because we have taken a step and we have prayed that you would honor this, that you would reach out by your spirit and touch and begin ministering in each of those lives, Lord, healing and restoring. And Lord, I know there's, there's a lot of people that have been feeling a great sense of loss this past year. And I wanna pray, Lord, that you would also begin to minister, Father, to their hearts in the midst of all this. Lord, whatever they feel has been a loss, we pray, Lord, that you would restore and replace with better things. We thank you that you're a healing God. You're a good God. You're a God that speaks. You're a God that moves. And we ask that tonight you would heal, speak, and move among us. Thanks for these testimonies. Thanks, Lord, for this night of just sharing. As we get into Thanksgiving Day tomorrow, I pray we would remember how good you are and that we would make any changes that you spoke to our hearts tonight in our own lives. As we sing this closing song, Lord, I pray that our hearts would really connect with you. Father, you're so good. You are so good in all of your ways, and we want to bring attention to your goodness by singing you songs of praise. And so, Lord, bless the rest of this evening. Get everybody home safe in this rough weather. And, Lord, bless the rest of this week. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. Let's stand, and let's really give the Lord a song of praise. Let's celebrate as a family.